good morning guys how are all keeping what's going on hope everyone's having a lovely day smash that thumbs up give us a little heart in the comments if you're having a nice day seeking a bit of validation from you uh, today i'm out and about conscious this car about to go past and ruin the audio but today what we are going to do and i'm drawing it out till this car gets past there we go what we're going to do today is i'm going to answer some regularly asked questions about doing your first great north run it's by far and away one of the most popular vlogs that i've done which is how to run your first north run and i'll make a little link to that either in the description or at the end so stick about for that if you're a bit nervous about your first great north run uh, or you're just wanting some top tips this is the vlog for you so stick about I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, i've chosen to come along here this morning and get wet and get uh, get my legs nettled nothing like a good nettling to start the day so oh, first mile so the first thing normally the first thing that anyone asks us about the great north run is how far do i need to run before the big day and truthfully 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 it bloody varies mate so <laughs> you really want your long run for the great north run to be anywhere between 8 and 12 miles no you don't need to run the full 13 ahead of the day but will it make it easier probably so if your goal is to complete the great north run and you're not too happy and you're not too happy you're not too bothered about the time uh, then by all means anywhere between 8 and 12 miles for your longest run before the day will do you of course some people just turn up on the day no training and can knock out the 13.1 miles it's probably not the best strategy but it is one of the largest races around and there will be plenty of people behind you regardless of what pace you're going so anywhere between 8 and 12 would be my suggestion and if you're going for a time then really you should have been up to the half marathon mark uh, at some point in your training right on to the next one so the next tip that i would say or the next big question i should say that everybody who's run the first north run normally asks me as a non-runner or a, somebody who's just recently getting into it is they'll say what do i eat what should i eat before do i need anything to eat during and nobody nobody cares about what they eat afterwards it's going to be a big greasy pizza uh, or a takeaway for most people <laughs> so yeah what should you eat before well a couple of days before you should try and cut out the alcohol if you're a drinker and try and have a little bit less coffee a little bit less caffeine in the system improve your sleep and get plenty of water those are a couple of key things in your diet realistically now when you're running you burn anywhere between 60 to 120 carbs an hour I think you might have to go away and google that I'll google it and put it here if I'm wrong uh, but yeah so 60 to 90 grams of carbs an hour is a good little ratio but for most people it doesn't really matter you know if you're going to be out for about two hours maybe you need to get yourself a couple of gels I personally like the science and sport gels uh, they seem to sit well on my stomach but if you're going to use gels during the race just test them out on your other runs beforehand do not go into the great north run and start eating gels or drinking energy drinks that you don't normally drink your body just won't react well to it or it may not and uh, you might end up in a right pickle so whatever you're going to eat during the race then you know test that out couple of weeks in advance around about now yeah for most people who are going to go two hours or there about two and a half hours three hours there's plenty of aid stations along the way they've got water 
Uh, so carrying water isn't necessarily a big fear. You're never going to be short along the course. There's always plenty of people with bottles of water, jelly babies, sweeties, oranges along the course that you can pick up off if you run out of your own stuff. So yeah. Now the night before, I like to keep it simple. I normally have a pepperoni pizza, uh, a freezer one, because that works well for me. It always sits nicely on my stomach. It's full of carbs and I know I'm gonna have no issues with it. Sometimes if I'm doing a longer race, I'll maybe have a big thing of white rice or an extra bowl of porridge the day before. But other than that, it's really just a meal of your choice, but probably with a couple of carbohydrates in. You don't need to go mad like they used to in the pasta parties and scram two massive bowls of pasta. It's just gonna sit in your gut and you're not gonna be able to digest it. So whatever you would normally eat, maybe a little bit more carbohydrates, a couple of little snacks before you go to bed and plenty of water. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Ooh, a bit more out of breath than I should be, yeah. But yeah, certainly that's my advice for what to eat when you're doing this great north run. On to the next tip. Do, 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 do. The next thing is, <laughs> the next thing is, what should you wear? What should I wear on? What sort of clothes should I wear for running? And uh, my answer is running clothes. Of more specifically, whatever you've worn to train in. If you wore a pair of shorts to train in, and they're really comfy, those are your shorts for the day. If you've got a charity t-shirt, or you're going dressed as a dragon, probably try and run in your outfit beforehand. If you're blessed to not have to run around in a giant six foot dress, with a massive doll's head on the top, then you are going to be blessed with the simplicity of looking for comfort over style and substance. Uh, too many people try and look cool running a half marathon. It's not really that important to look cool. You can have a change of clothes at the end, change back into your super cool, super happy clothes then. But for the race, you want to be wearing a nice t-shirt or vest. You want to be wearing your comfiest pair of shorts that you own and you want a pair of socks that is equally comfortable. I always run in more mile cheviot socks whether it's trails or road I just know that they work really well for me <clears throat> so if you want a specific runs, running sock Star Fitness Newcastle based uh, shop then check them out online they're pretty good for running socks but any old socks will do, you know. You don't have to have running socks to run. Then, the most important piece of kit, your shoes. So, running the Great North Run, it's all on road. So you want a pair of road shoes. You do not want to be going into this oh, with a pair of trail shoes. Excuse me. If you want to wear a pair of super lightweight carbon racers, oh, then by all means, get yourself some. But again, whatever you've been training in is normally the best bet. Any shoe that you're going to go the distance in has got to be something that you've worn beforehand and something that you feel confident in on your feet. So don't worry about the perfect shoe. There are that many running shoes. That there really is no such thing uh, although people might disagree drop drop a comment below if you think you know what the perfect running shoe is <laughs> for the great north run crocs pretty sure people run it in crocs so whatever's the most comfy for you that's my top tip make it comfy make it relaxed you don't want any extra hassle on the day with your kit so yeah that's what you should wear Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Nobody gonna slow me down. Oh no. Oh, my three. Look at that. Eh? Three top tips in three miles. 
to let you do them all this morning, have I? Right then, so the next thing that I get frequently asked, and by frequently, I mean about twice a month, in the lead up to the Great North Run, is what pace should I run? How fast should I be going? And for that, my friends, you need to track backwards. So if you've been using Strava or another non as good as Strava based run tracker, then you want to be having a look at some of the pace of your longer runs. It will be somewhere around that mark. <clears throat> if you're going for a specific time, then pretty much Google pace calculator, put in your desired time and have a look at the splits, the mile splits for that or the kilometer splits. Whichever you prefer, course miles is the correct version. And if you look at it and you think, wait, well, that's what I'm running, how'd it do that? Then give it a smash. Uh, what I will say about pacing, real key thing, I put it in the video for last year as well, and that is don't sprint in the first 100 meters, don't be the person who gets to the time bridge and is knackered and there will be a lot of them so don't be discouraged when you set away running if your run pace is this then your run pace is this if you get up to the speed like this and that's not you then everybody who you went past is going to come back past you on the time bridge or a mile in and it's always the case always the case whenever you do the great north run that people will sprint the first one or two miles or go out too hard and then you'll pick them off as the race goes on. Again, for most people, it's gonna take you a little bit of time, two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, maybe a bit more. And uh, most of the people around you will be running their race. Don't concentrate on their race. Don't think, oh, loads of people seem to be going past us here. I best pick it up. Bad move, just to sit back and chill. You've got a long time to go from the start to get to, one, get to the end in one piece and just to, you need to take it easy. If you set off slow and you've got energy at the halfway, you can pick it up. That's a much better position to be in in your first Great North Run than setting off too fast and then having six or seven miles left where you're absolutely nagged and hating it. So yeah, slow down. It's a bit of a fun run and nobody except the people in the very front uh, pens at the Great North Run gets a good start. You will be walking to the start line and it will take a little while to get the crowds to space out. So don't worry about it. Um, if you are someone who struggles with crowds, then I would recommend being on either side of the fence. Uh, when you're in there, just trying to find your way to the edge of the fence. And what you'll find is, you'll see a lot more club vests of runners <laughs> and they will be hiding out at the sides because they know that your time only starts from when you cross the start line. So you can walk, you can take your time before you get to the front. Don't do what I sometimes have done and get really head up diving in and out of everybody to get the start. It's just not good for you. Anyway, that's how you should pace it. So yeah, that's about it really. A couple of little tips there on things that people have asked me in the past. If I haven't answered your question and you want to ask a question in the comments, then please feel free to leave a question below and we'll see if we can be helpful with it. There are quite a few good runners follow this channel so it might be that some other people join in and give their advice as well but best of luck for the big day enjoy the great north run it is a spectacular event that um, really must be experienced by everyone that can do it at least once in their life so yeah have a really good time enjoy it make the most of it look around at the crowds give out plenty of high fives and make sure you put <laughs> make sure you put some sort of payment method on your phone or your watch for a nice cheeky pint 
of lager or lime and soda at the sand dancer pub at the end anyway have a good one i'll see you in the next one bye